PK52, the Saturday morning meeting. The title of this program today is Tools. There's a lot of things that have happened in the automotive space. We've talked about it uh, over the last half a year, how the market was going to change. And there's a lot of changes going on right now. So let's just talk about the numbers real quick and see what's happened over the last couple of years. So last year, or 2022, because we don't have the final 2023 numbers yet, but 2022, new car production was down about 4 million units. And, you know, I ask people all the time, if we don't make a car, it's not manufactured, how do we sell it as a used car? And I don't know why that question stumps people, but the answer is you can't sell a car that was never made. So that last year, 2022, there were 4 million people that probably would have bought a new car, but they couldn't because they weren't made by any manufacturers. There was a slow in production parts and COVID was still hanging on. You would think that the used car market would elevate that and we'd sell more used cars, but it was very interesting that year, almost 5 million used cars were sold, less. So we went down 5 million, 4 million new, 5 million, that's 9 million transactions that didn't happen. Several things happen. Several things slow the market down. You know, people say, well, I wish we had more new product. You got to be careful what you wish for. Because now as product starts to stack up, then profitability goes down. Why is product stacking up? Well, because the interest rates went up. So my payment went up. And so as that interest rate goes up, then people start financing a car for more than 60 months, 72, 84 months. And over the years, there's some dealers on a high-end cars that were charging multiple thousand dollars over MSRP and extra clean book and taking people out to 72 or 84 months and they just absolutely can't trade. So the market has slowed down. And so the reason I want to talk about this is, is now there are more tools available for a sales professional to use than ever before. However, most sales professionals still try to do a sales the way we did 10 years ago. Going to the dealership, showing up with a good attitude, and waiting for the customer to come in. Why would you do the same thing you're doing all the time and expect different results? In fact, the funny thing about it is you don't get the same result as the market leaves you behind. You're doing the same thing. You're working just as hard, but all of a sudden you're losing ground. So let's talk about this. This is the deck screw right here. Now, I can't, but maybe somebody can take their fingers, which would be a tool, and put it on this screw and screw that down into a deck board. Now, I don't know who could do that, but it wouldn't be very fast. It would not be very efficient. But I need the screw to be into that deck board to hold the board. So what I've done is, as a human, I've developed the ability to create tools. So now I've got this little tiny screwdriver. Now, I'm going to be able to put that in that slot and I'm going to be able to slowly turn that screw and eventually I'm going to get that in the deck board. But if I wanted to do a more efficient job, then I would lengthen the screwdriver. By lengthening the screwdriver, I can apply more torque on the head of the screw and I can screw it down. But this is the year <laughs> 2023. I don't know why anybody on earth would do that. You know, So I'm just going to grab a screw gun, I'm going to put it on there and, whoop, and it's done. So all of these tools are available. You just have to use them. And in the sales industry, the, the, the amount of tools that anybody has to be able to put their hands on at no cost to you, immense, amazing. Let's talk about pre-owned cars for a second. Let's talk about pre-owned cars. First of all, the thing I want to do is, is every single manufacturer now sells certified cars. Now, in my opinion, if the car is not a maintenance-free car and the car has long-term reliability problems, naming the car certified does not make the car better. I'm, that's just my opinion. But every manufacturer has some kind of certification standard. With Toyota, it's a 160-point quality assurance sheet. Now, the consumer doesn't know what's on here, but they would assume there's 160 items, extra 15 for extra items and extra 14 for a hybrid. They're all right here. And a technician has to do all of this. But I, I don't think they understand this. The technician doesn't work for the dealership. Let me explain. When a car comes in and they flag it as a certified car, the technician grabs this or a digital check sheet with a tablet and goes through all 160 items and signs off. They are paid by the dealership to do that. So they're not working for the dealership. They're working for the customer that we don't even have yet. The car's not available. The car's not on the internet. We don't have it for sale. 
but the technician already gets paid. So why on earth would you not tell a customer the name of the technician that approved the vehicle? It's really interesting. Over my years in the business, people have asked me, can I get the name of the person that owned the car? Well, because of privacy laws, can't do that anymore. But what do you think? They, they wouldn't know who I was. I'm going to call this guy up and go, hey, I'm thinking about buying the car you traded in at ABC dealership. Is it good? What are they going to say? No, that thing was on it. Dude, don't buy that car. It was about to blow up. They don't know who you are. They're going to go, yeah, it's like a family member. You know, we hated to let it go. It was the best car we ever had. It's what you're going to get. You know who knows about the car? The technician. Why would you ever sell a pre-owned car or a certified car and not tell the customer the name of the technician? Let's just talk a second. So this is very important because they've done this. Now, once they've done this, we pay them. So let's say the average is an hour and a half a shop rate. So just to complete this form, an hour and a half they've already been paid before there's a customer. Then they're going to start flagging stuff. Anything they can repair, maintain, or replace, okay? So there's a repair order. So I was talking about certified, let's go to just pre-owned cars. Nobody takes a pre-owned car in trade and immediately puts it on the lot. Well, that, that, that's, a, that's a legal nightmare. That car goes through your shop and there's a technician that approves that car. So we decide whether we wanna retail the car or take the car to the auction and wholesale the car. So there's always gonna be a repair order on every pre-owned car. So I look on this repair order and I, and I realize we've done tires. Now, there's four identical vehicles in the market that the customer's looking at online. They're all the same color, they're all the same trim level, basically the same miles and all the same year. In fact, why would a consumer not think these are all gonna be exactly the same? And you and I both know the way the car was treated and how it was prepped before it was sold makes all the difference in the vehicle. And let's say your vehicle is the most expensive one of the four. Why would you think that customer wouldn't go to where the car was less money first? The number one reason why they don't show up for your two o'clock Saturday appointment, how many times I've said this, is because at 10 o'clock that morning, they bought that identical vehicle somewhere else. They don't continue to come see you, they just don't show up. So you have, from the time they say they're coming in, Till the time they arrive, you have the ability to use tools. Well, the 160-point insurance form is a tool if the customer understands that the other places didn't do that. They didn't pay a tech. And this right here, I look over here, so I'm selling against the car, and I don't know what, what other cars are looking at, but let's say it's $500 less. Well, $500 is $500. <laughs> That's never sounded like not a lot of money. And they think, well, I can get a $500 better deal if I go over here. Well. We put a brand new set of tires on the car. It's right here, I'm, I'm looking at it. We did a brand new set of tires. So over at the other place, is it okay to buy a used car and within the first 30 days have to replace the tires? Tires are $1,200. Well, they were saving $500. Now, 30 days later, they put a brand new set of tires on the car at $1,200 and they're okay with that? I don't think the brain works. You're thinking like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I, I just lost money. I could have bought the top car over at, at the Toyota store that KC was talking about because he told me it had brand new tires on it. I didn't factor that in. Why would you expect the consumer to factor that in if you don't tell them? Okay, so I, I, I see right here we did a brake job. So we bought the, brought the brakes back to next to new. And the safety and technology of all brands depend on the tread and depend on the brakes. That, that's all brands. So what I've done is I've, I've released the safety features back to close to next to new as possible. So the other car stopped. I have never had a customer go, hey, can we take the car in the shop and drop both front wheels off so I can measure the, the thickness of the brake pad and what's left so I'll know when I have to do my next. I've never had. I would do it. I would do it in a heartbeat if they ask, but I've never had a customer ask me that. So now they take delivery of the car and 45 days later, they're starting to get a squeaking noise from the front and they find out, they take it into a little a quick lube place and they go, dude, you're into your rotors. You need a full brake job and probably going to need at least two front 
rotors. And now, now you're in thousands of dollars. So you thought you were saving $500. Why, why did they go buy that car? Because you didn't use the tool. The tool is there. It's, it's not forbidden. You know, I'm not trying to screw that screw in with my fingers. That's ridiculous. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the most technology that I can to be the most efficient I can. So I work with some of the most brilliant people on earth, people that can meet a total stranger and sell them a product that in some cases it's almost impossible for them to afford, but they get them so excited and so in, 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 enduring into the product. that they, So you're already phenomenal. Use the tools. Use the tools. Let me not make this gigantically long here. There are, there, there's technology from everything you buy, from a TV to a cell phone to a car to a, to a truck to a, a watercraft to an airplane. And if you look at what the technology was 10 years ago and where the technology is now, it, it's, it's, not, it's nowhere near the same. So if somebody's trading in a six or seven year old vehicle and you're selling them a brand new vehicle, there's going to be technology on there that they're not experienced with unless they own another vehicle of that same vintage. So now I'm trying to explain to you all this major technology. So what really happens is people pay all the money for something and can never use it the way it was designed to be used. Trucks are my deal. I love trucks. You can get out of the city and go somewhere where nobody knows where you are, and you can really change your perspective in a very short period of time. And I realize that some people have never done that. I, I recommend. I do recommend because nature is amazing. And that's what trucks and SUVs are for. They're a, the ability to be able to take you places that a normal passenger car wouldn't. So, Years and years, I would take somebody on a demonstration drive and I would make them put the vehicle in four-wheel drive. Now, most people can put a vehicle in four-wheel drive, a lever to shift on the fly or a button, and they know what four-wheel drive is. It makes the drive system work for all four wheels. There we go. However, there is a low-range four-wheel drive in a lot of vehicles, and if you don't explain to them the low-range function and have them use the low-range function on the demo drive, then there's a chance the entire ownership cycle of that product, they've never used that. That's the majority of people have never taken their vehicle and put it in a low range. The low range has a function. Also vehicles more prevalent are becoming a locking rear differential. If I don't understand why I would lock the differential, what it does when I lock the differential and why I would use it, then I'm never going to use it. So what I've done is I've paid for something that I'm never going to use. The, the good side about that is because it has all that, it's probably going to have a higher resale value so we can sell it to somebody else that doesn't know how to use it. Now the technology electronically has gone through the roof. Crawl mode, multi-terrain select, active traction control. And so what I've done here is I've ripped a video off the internet. They shouldn't have put it on there. Now it belongs to me. I've ripped it off. I put a pop-up box. There I am at the bottom of the deal. And I don't think the majority of people that buy an equipped vehicle with multi-terrain select have any idea how that works. So, I can send this in advance. You're buying an advanced off-road vehicle that is equipped with multi-terrain select. I wanted you guys to watch this video before you came in to see the, the technology and what it will actually do. And if I didn't have to do that, if they came in and bought the vehicle and that was the first time I met them, I'm going to send this video at delivery I'm going to send it as a text with a link so they can keep it. So the first time they go off road, they could try every feature on multi-train select. Let me play a little few minutes of this. Congratulations. Once again, I'm super excited to send you this video series. There's going to be one on four wheel drive. I'm going to send you one on a track and this is on multi-train select. I do this with all of my customers that buy TRD off road equipped Toyotas. These vehicles are made for you to have fun on and off road. So let me tell you a little bit about this feature. First of all, the first section is mud and sand. Mud and sand can be done in four wheel drive high and four wheel drive low. That's the only section of the four that can be done in high range and low range. It'll allow And so I, I didn't play the whole video, but I want you to understand that's a tool. So in, in, in conclusion, 
Of course, I'm trying to help the customer understand the value of the product and the technology we built in, in the unit. I, I, that, that is without question. But the most important thing is, I'm the only one that sent them that. Now I'm showing them the value of me. I've shown them that I know what I'm doing. I know the product they're looking at. I know the enhancements of the product. And so maybe of the four vehicles they're looking at, maybe they decide instead of making the appointment for the vehicle, they make the appointment for the salesperson. PK52, the Saturday morning meeting.